morning. My name is Brenda Grissom, and I'm the founder of Gertrude's House Breast Cancer Support Group. I want to thank God for using me today. And then I want to thank uh, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, Council Chair for Douglas County. I want to co thank Commissioner Carton for having me and Christy for helping me out on this. Thank you for bringing AWARE to breast cancer to Douglas County. I want to start by talking about um, the statistics in Douglas County. In 2018, 51 out of 400 women were um, diagnosed with breast cancer in Douglas County. And then last year, 2019, 64 women of 1,400 women were diagnosed with breast cancer. I, I've been seeing a commercial running on television from um, Cancer Treatment Centers of America, and it says, cancer won't wait. And you know what? Cancer will not wait. And they also say, don't put off the care that you need. So that is, I, I like to piggy on that that says, please don't wait. You know, I know there's someone out there that is terrified, okay? You found a lump in your breast, you felt a lump in your breast, maybe yesterday, maybe a week ago, maybe even a month ago, maybe a year ago, but you are so terrified of, of the result if you go to the doctor that maybe you might have breast cancer that you um, are terrified to go see the doctor. But early detection is the key to breast cancer. The earlier you get the diagnosis, the earlier you can be treated. I am a 36 year breast cancer survivor. I was diagnosed in 1984. And at that time I was uh, 25 years old, just about to turn 26. And um, I have um, cancer in my family. It does run in my family. I'll talk a little bit about that later. But yes, when I found that lump in my breast at um, 25, about to be 26, it was December, okay, 1984. I went to the doctor and uh, he, you know, felt the lump, did a, a clinical exam. And then he sent me, he did a lumpectomy. And when he did the lumpectomy, uh, ladies and gentlemen, he pulled the lump out and he told his nurse that they were going to send it over in a vial. Well, as soon as he pulled it out, he changed from sending it in this vial that had liquid in it to saying to her, we're going to send it over fresh. Well, now in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, what is going on? You know, why did he change it? So I knew something was not right. Well, five days later, they called me back in to see him again. And that's when the diagnosis came that I did have breast cancer. Okay, yes, I was terrified. When you hear those words that you have cancer, you do, you get terrified, okay? And I said to him, well, okay, when am I going to die? He said, you're not going to die. At that point, I said, okay, whatever it is, whatever we need to do, let's just do it. And um, I decided after um, he gave me my options, I decided to go ahead and have a lump. I decided to go ahead and have a mastectomy. And for those of you that do not know what a mastectomy is, that's when they remove the breast. So we removed my breast and um, I was stage four. And with that uh, came chemotherapy. Now, I'm not gonna say chemotherapy is fun. It is not fun at all. Third day, you're sick, you're vomiting, you just don't, just don't feel good. So here I was. Uh, 24, 25 years old, sick, very sick. But you know what? I feel like the Lord just carried me through that because the whole time I was going through treatment, I just kept moving. He kept doing things. And then once it was over, it was just like he had just sat me down and said, go, you know, go on. Because I really just kept on moving. Now, different things happen for different people when they're going through uh, cancer treatment. Um, I'm not gonna say it's easy. Like I said earlier, it is not an easy thing to go through, but you can do it. You know, you can do it. The key is early detection. I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to go and get, and get some um, treatment for it. Go and seek medical help. If you've got that lump in your breast, go seek medical help. Okay, so three years later, here I was going to see my mom. She had had a aneurysm. Right before I left, I had had a mammogram. 
the mammogram results came back that I was fine. There was nothing there. I didn't feel anything in the self-exam. They didn't see anything on the screen for the, I mean, on the result for the mammogram. But right while I was out there seeing her within 30 days, I did my self-exam and there was a lump in my breast. I came home. I told my husband, take me straight to Kaiser. I have a lump in my breast. I got to Kaiser. They told me that they could not see me, <clears throat> excuse me, because I did not have an appointment. Excuse me. I did not have an appointment. So they told me they couldn't see me. And I asked where my doctor was. They said that he was in surgery. And I said, listen, I need you to go see Dr. Rahm and tell him I'm here and I'm not going anywhere until you all take this lump off my breast. Well, after going back and forth, back and forth, finally they said, come on, Dr. Rahm said to go ahead and take that lump out. When they took the lump out, I could see it in his face. I knew that it was cancer. The doctor that took it out, I could see in his face that it was cancer. Again, three days later, Dr. Ron called me and said, come on in and see me. I said, no, just tell me, I know I have cancer again, when do I start? And he said, no, come on in, let's talk about it. Well, I go in, we talked about it. He sent me to see Dr. David Baer. This is Kaiser Permanente. Went to see Dr. David Baer and we you know, started my chemotherapy. So now here I am, I'm um, 27, about to be 28 and I'm having a second mastectomy. Again, chemotherapy, mastectomy was my treatment. And um, I went ahead and did the same thing. Let's just do it. Whatever we're gonna do, let's just do it. So I went ahead and had my breast, my second breast removed. All right, so um, <clears throat> I'd like to tell you all also to be your own advocate. If you feel something, you know, sometimes the doctor may say, you know, let's watch it. Okay, let's watch it, take it out, watch it over there, not inside of my body. So be your own advocate, say, you know, I don't want this in here. If you feel a certain way about your body, yes, listen to your doctor, but you know your body as well. So I would say, you know, have the lumpectomy and have the lump removed and then they can test it. But again, listen to your doctor, the doctor, they know what they're doing. I'm just Brenda given advice, you know, this from my personal experience. All righty. Um, okay, so then 10 years after that, I had um, the BRCA test done. The BRCA test is the breast cancer test. I had the BRCA1, so there's a BRCA1 and a BRCA2. I had the BRCA1 done. And uh, my OBGYN saw that I had had both breasts removed. And so he said, let's go ahead and uh, do the BRCA test. So we did the BRCA test and it came back that I had the BRCA1 test and something that was unidentified. So they didn't know what that was. So he said, let's go ahead and remove your ovaries. So I said, okay, let's do it. Well, five days later, after five days uh, in the hospital, he called, came in and said, you know, everything looked fine. I'm sorry, let's go back. Everything looked fine the day of surgery. Five days later, I'm at home. He calls me and said, come in and see me, Bren. And I said, uh-uh, just tell me when do I start? You know, I just knew that it was cancer when he called me. So I went ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, and did my uh, chemotherapy, had my ovaries removed and chemotherapy. I'm so sorry, I have dry throat. And did chemotherapy. And um, here I am today. <clears throat> um, now here I am. I'm, I have some notes because I don't want to forget something. Okay, so um, so here I am. Breast number one gone. Breast number two gone. Ovaries gone. Prior to me having my ovaries removed, um, my doctor tested me for. Um, my, tested my ovaries to see if they were still working because I wanted to have a child. So the doctor came back and told me, be grateful you're alive because you're never going to have children. I said, you know what? I know a man that can do anything and I am going to have a child. Her name is going to be Rodella Gertrude. Six years later, I thought I had a bladder infection, you all. And uh, I got treated for the bladder infection and they called me back in. I said, hey, I'm still using the restroom a lot. 
um, something's not right. I, maybe I need some more uh, medication for the bladder infection. And they said, well, you know, there's sometimes a kind of cancer that grows like a baby and delivers like a baby. So we want you to take an ultrasound. So I said, okay. So now I'm worried, you know, here it is again. I have cancer again. And so I'm sitting in there crying, calling my cousin saying, I think I got cancer again. I just don't want to do this again. And the lady says, come with me. I'm going to do your ultrasound. You know what, folks? She went down one side of my stomach, upside the other side. I sat straight up screaming to the top of my lungs. Thank you, Jesus. That's a baby. So guess what? I was four and a half months pregnant. And my daughter's name is Rodella Gertrude. So there's, a, of course, a bad side of having cancer. But then in my case, there was a shining light. The Lord allowed me to have this miracle child. Um, in my life. So I am so grateful for that. And then comes um, me and uh, some folks out here in Douglas County that were having some issues with um, rides and uh, finances and what that I knew of that had breast cancer. So I said, I'm going to, the Lord put it on my heart to start a support group. So the support group is called Gertrude's House. And what we do here at Gertrude's House, we're, you know, our motto is that we're just a sister away and we want to be your battle buddies and we are your battle buddies 24 7 you can call anytime day or night and we will talk to you about your cancer if we need to get together we have meetings if we need to get together and stretch out on the ground kicking and screaming until we figure it out that's what we want to do we really do want to be your battle buddy now we do we provide rides we do your copay if you can't pay your copay groceries, utility bills, child care, um, emotional support when you come to our meetings. And uh, that's what we do. So with me having this cancer came the opportunity for me to share with other women what I have been through, what other women have been through. We team other women up with each other. Uh, if you I never had radiation, so if you're going through radiation treatment, I would team you up with somebody that's had that's going that has had radiation. If you're having chemo, I talk to you, and then I would team you up with someone else. So that's what we do here at um, Gertrude's house. Now, um, I want to make sure that I really don't forget something that I want to share with you. Uh, okay, self exam. OK, I don't know if you know how to do a self-exam, but just in case you don't know how to do a self-exam, you take your three fingers just like this and you never miss a finger. OK, so if you're moving, you would move like this. So to begin, you would stand straight up and look in the mirror, take a look at your breast standing up and you want to look for any changes in your breast. OK, look for changes. Do you see something that looks like the outside of orange that would be something that's suspect so you would want to seek care for that if you see some lump you want to seek care for that okay now if you see any change in your breasts you want to go and seek care for that change the next thing you want to do after you look in the mirror and look straight up you want to bend straight over and you want to hang your breasts down and you want to take a look at those breasts hanging down so now, if, after you've checked the breast hanging down, then um, you want to stand up and squeeze the nipple. If anything fluid comes out of that uh, nipple, you want to seek care, okay? Then um, after you do that, then you want to take one hand. So we're going to say the left hand that's going to go behind your head. You're going to take those three fingers. Now there's two techniques, the circular motion and then the up and down motion. So you're gonna put that hand behind your head, take those three fingers, start here, all the way up here. This is breast tissue, folks. All the way down above the navel, that's breast tissue. Under here is breast tissue. All the way over here, this is all breast tissue. So you wanna start up here. You wanna go very lightly on the surface to see if you feel anything. Then you wanna go deep, folks. And then you wanna go really deep, as deep and press as hard as you can, as hard as you can stand it, because you never know there could be something there. 
So you want to go as deep as you can. And remember, you only want to move by one finger. So now this finger here becomes this finger and you move down. Same thing, very lightly, a little deeper, and then as deep as you can stand it. Again, one finger going down, same thing. Now, guess what? Some man has walked away from the screen and, and I want you to come back because I want you to know men get breast cancer also. So you want to um, also check your breasts. Men, be sure to check your breasts, okay? So that is um, the technique you use for checking your breasts. And like I said, you can go in a circular motion this way or you can go up and down. Okay, that is your self-exam. And um, they tell you to do it around your cycle a couple of days before, a couple of days after. My um, recommendation is that you do it on your birthday. Okay, if you were born on the 10th, do it every month on the 10th. If you were born on the 15th, do it every month on the 15th. Because you know when you were born and you will remember to do your self-exam. That way, if you do it the same time every month, you will be able to recognize the changes in your breast. Okay. Uh, okay. We talked about um, being your own advocate. Okay. Now let's talk about um, genetics. Like I told you, um, I had the genetics test and I had the BRCA gene. In my family, starting at the top, my grandmother had breast cancer. All of my aunts had breast cancer. And then starting with me, I was the first one diagnosed. I was diagnosed, and then all of my cousins have had breast cancer. So if your mom and your aunt or your mom, your grandmother, you know, if you see a pattern where there are several of you that several in the family that have had breast cancer, I recommend that you ask your caregiver, your doctor, what do you think about me having a genetics test? Okay, so that way you'll know. And in the genetics test, if you've been diagnosed with uh, breast cancer and your children have a 50% chance of being diagnosed with breast cancer. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't mean if you have six children, three of them might have breast cancer and three might not. That means each individual child has a 50% chance of getting breast cancer. Each one have their own 50% uh, chance. And they recommend that you have that genetics, have that talk with your children 10 years prior to your diagnosis. So my diagnosis was at uh, right at 25 years old. So my daughter and I started having that talk at 15 years old, okay? So that's what I would recommend you do, is go ahead and have a genetics test if you have multiple members of your family with breast cancer. I think that is just about it. I remember Gertrude's house. We're just a sister away. Um, we're a nonprofit, 501c3. You can reach me at gertrudeshouse.com. And I'm just so happy to have had this chance to share with you my journey with breast cancer. And again, it's not easy. Don't be afraid. Don't be that woman that's sitting around and saying, I, I feel this lump but I'm afraid to go to the doctor. Please don't be that person. Don't be that man that says, I feel a lump here, but men don't get breast cancer. Please don't, please don't. Please be your own advocate. Go ahead, just like Cancer Treatment Centers of America says. They said, don't put off the care you need. Cancer, you all, will not wait. I love you and thank you for your time. Thank you, Douglas County. Thank you, Douglas County TV. Thank you, Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones. And thank you, Jen Christy, thank you so much. I appreciate this time and I hope that I've done you all very well.